welcome to this course of Cisco SA. I welcome you all to my YouTube channel, Z Network Lessons. My name is Zubair Altaf Qureshi, and in this lesson, we are going to talk about the Cisco failover, which is basically the active active failover using the multi context. Now, in my last video, I have gone through the active standby failover in the Cisco ASA and the limitations of active st standby is that one of the box, which is the secondary or the primary, depending on the failover, will be staying as a hot spare. That means this hardware, this resource is sitting idle right there. Yeah. So this costly piece of box piece of hardware is sitting without being used. But that is again, I mean, a good option in, in case of failover, it will be active and uh, the traffic will be uh, redirected from this hardware box. But then again, you have better uh, technologies or features you can say, which you can utilize to, um, I mean, use the hardware in a better way. So now today, one of the technologies that's, that I'm going to talk about is the active active failover, wherein what we will do is both the boxes will be actively forwarding. But there's a caveat to this that this is not like the clustering, which is another feature in most of the firewalls nowadays and also in ASA, but in code 9.x and above. Now, you will not be, I will not be suggesting you to use active active if you're running on code 9.x and above, but somehow if you end up using a code which is below 9.x then you have to use this active active stand active active failover using multi context i mean this in a sense is not 100 percent active active this is kind of if you guys are familiar with mstp then it is something like that so in mstp uh, one VLAN, right? One VLAN is going to be forwarded through one root bridge and the other VLAN is going to be th forwarded through another root bridge. Uh, in, in, in the same fashion here also, what you will do is you are going to divide these firewalls into again, the logical firewalls, which is called the multi-context. So for example, I have two firewalls here, ASA1 and ASA2, yeah? So you will be dividing these two firewalls again into two contexts. So this is say this is context one and this is context two. Again, this is context one and this is context two. Now, what will happen is, so you have a VLAN, you, I mean, there will be multiple VLANs in your, um, in your infrastructure in the, in the LAN side. So for example, you have VLAN 20 here and you have VLAN 21 here, which is my case, okay. Then what will happen is you have a switch in here, which has all those VLANs here. But what will happen is VLAN 20 will go via this context and the VLAN 21 is going to take the other uh, I mean context, which is on the other file, which is context two. So that is how what you do, how you uh, achieve this active active uh, scenario wherein your both the firewalls are actively forwarding the data uh, and in in case one of the firewall fails then both the uh, i mean context go active so in the ac1 only context one will be active and ac2 only context two will be active and uh, one more thing that you need to understand is uh, with with uh, with multi context you only can 
configure on the active context remember so in case you want to do any changes on the context one you have to go to asa1 and in case you have to do any uh, changes on the context two you have to go to asa2 for the changes for the active context right uh, so that is the whole idea um, i mean it's not kind of a uh, uh, load balancing stuff in a sense maybe because in vlan2 you might end up having more traffic than in vlan21 but yeah it gives kind of uh, i mean uh, i mean kind of a feature where you uh, the other box is not sitting idle it is also forwarding some of the traffic that is generated through your lan okay let me clear this now now how do we achieve this first of all you have to be in the multi context mode so you change these firewalls to mode multiple simple command mode multiple and then again we are using the failover lan interface and the failover link interface on the same ethernet 3 we can use on different uh, uh, interfaces as you as you have seen in the last video uh, so this will be used for config synchronization and the heartbeat and this will be used to uh, i mean um, to synchronize the connection right so nat tables and connection tables right so we will be using the ethernet 3 for this only and now here what you can see is i am using only one one interfaces for the outside and for the inside right uh, but what i'll do is i'll be using sub interfaces and i'll be showing you how to use the vlans and how to set up this uh, l2 switch in a sense um, because i'll be making these two interfaces as trunk and these two as access on vlan 20 and this one on vlan 21 and on the outside i'll be having all the interfaces here as trunk and i'll be tagging these interfaces with the vlan 11 and 10 tags yeah so all this uh, um, i mean configuration i'll be doing from scratch so you can so follow me and uh, and uh, go along with the lab so once you have uh, i mean um, both the firewalls in the multiple mode which is the prerequisite and also you know about the hardware that i said right so you need to have the same model make it model you need to have the same um, version software version you need to have the same interface numbers and also the interface types that should be same there are um, many other things that needs to be same you you can go to the uh, documents and check about that uh, and also i mean uh, you have a better um, technology that i said like as clustering right so clustering um, is something that is there in the in the industry right now which is uh, being used by every firewall it is like the uh, like the uh, the stack wise technology in cisco catalyst switches and the and the vss in the uh, and also the vp vpc but uh, there is a difference between these because um, the the uh, uh, also the management plane in this asa is separate because for each context you have to log into different context i mean for each uh, context you have to log into the active context which can be on uh, the uh, different firewalls not not on the same firewalls but in case of stack wise you have the same uh, and also in the vss you have the same uh, management plane as well but in case of vpc you have separate uh, management planes uh, yeah so that is something that we will discuss in the uh, in the uh, uh, clustering classes for now you need to understand once you have this in the multi, uh, multiple context you have to create the context 1 and context 2 on both the firewalls you can do this but uh, i mean we will not be doing on the secondary firewall we will be doing this on the primary firewall um, and what i'll do is i'll create the context 1 and context 2 on the firewall 1 and then i will actually configure the failover so that all that um, settings right will be automatically uh, sent to the other firewall and all this all that configuration like the context and the interfaces all those stuff will automatically be um, i mean uh, configured here on the secondary firewall then we we will go to the context and configure the ip address on the sub interfaces for example i have will have the ethernet 0.10 and ethernet 0.11 here which will be tagged by vlan 11 and vlan 10 respectively yeah and then uh, we can go here inside inside would be 1.20 and uh, 21 yeah and you can see oh sorry this is 21 so vlan 20 and vlan 21 be tagged here 
this will be a trunk interface yeah this will be a uh, access port these all three will be trunk ports and you have to create the vlans here vlan 10 and 11 and here vlan 20 and 21 that is one thing once you do this then you go and uh, in the failover what we do we we, we configure the uh, so for the failover command you have to do it in the system mode system context you can say you go in the system context on the primary firewall and say like failover lan interface failover lan ip failover and inter sorry interface ip uh, failover uh, key failover um, uh, what else is the failover link interface and uh, then you specify the uh, actual failover command yeah you can do that failover command and and after that you will create a failover group so once you clear the failover group this is where we actually do the uh, active active so failover group one and you will create another failover group two yeah now once you create the failover group two then um, i mean inside failover one you will say primary this is, this is my primary uh yeah so this is like the priority and this is my secondary and also there is one more command which is the preemption so i will say preempt in both the groups preemption means once the active goes the secondary will obviously take over but once this active comes back it will take the role from the secondary okay so that is done when you have the preemption enabled otherwise the secondary will always be active unless and until the secondary fails and the active again will be uh, i mean will be changed from standby to active so uh, that is preemption so once you do i mean create these fail, uh, failover groups then you go to the context and then you say join failover group one and join failover group two yeah so that means context one will be the active in in the primary box and context two will be active in the secondary box so that is how you do the failover and then you will see on both the firewalls that on this firewall context one will be active and on this firewall context two will be active yeah so uh, you can i mean obviously check that by the command show failover that is the uh, verification command so let's start with the v uh, with the configuration right uh, let me just grab and cancel this okay so